Did you hear that? What was that? That was my shoulder. Eek. Oh my lord. Yeah, that was gross. Hello and welcome back to the Ride Home Podcast. My name is Abby. Hey guys, it's Caitlin. We have zero interest. I'm going to just say this again. None whatsoever. Zero interest in anything that's coming out in August. Nothing. <laughs> There's just nothing for us. Nope. Unfortunately, I would love to see Theater Camp, which is the one with Ben Platt. Yeah. Nothing is, it's not being shown in South Carolina. Of course. There's probably too many gays for yeah, South Carolina. Yeah, it's a little too, probably, too much. Too progressive. For the South. All yeah. of the theaters are like, maybe we won't do that. What a shame. It is a shame. So we don't have anything to see. And we decided to do a series of throwback episodes. And throwback doesn't necessarily mean like we're going back to the 60s. Like Mm -hmm. any genre, any year uh, in the future, Caitlin and I are going to each pick one, which is going to be a surprise for the other person. But this first movie was an audience choice. And we went with audience suggestions um, from Instagram, followed by an audience vote. Mm -hmm. And so we really narrowed this puppy down. Yes, (laughs) we did. (laughs) And the winner was Interstellar Mm -hmm. by, in your words, Chris. Chris Nolan. Chris Nolan. Yeah. Interstellar by Christopher Nolan. Now, Mm -hmm. I have a little bit of a history with this movie in that I have never seen it. Correct. It's the only Christopher Nolan movie I haven't seen. Okay. Okay. And I have been told by so many people for so many years to never see it. Mm -hmm. And that is because I have a little thing that we like to call anxiety. Mm -hmm. And one of my little spikes or triggers is anything involving like space and time and dimensions Mm -hmm. and realities. Because I feel like what happens to me is I start trying to unpack it too much And then Mm -hmm. whenever I get to a point where I'm trying to visualize the concept of infinity, Uh I start to like sweat and Mm -hmm. I start to get really panicky because I'm like, like, what is even real? It's too much. It's too much for my brain to handle. And so this movie has always been something that people have told me to stay away from. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And here we are. Here we are. And now... We got voted into you watching it. We got voted into me watching it. Yeah. So do you want to give us a quick little synopsis? I know that most people have probably seen this movie, so Mm -hmm. it is going to be uh, spoilers. We won't be holding anything back. But just a quick little synopsis to remind anybody if they haven't seen it in a while or who haven't seen it. And we probably haven't seen it in a while because this movie came out in 2014. So this movie is almost 10 years old. It will be 10 years old next year. Stick with me. This is quite the Google synopsis. (laughs) Christopher Nolan probably wrote it himself. Yeah, honestly. In Earth's future, a global crop blight and second dust bowl are slowly rendering the planet uninhabitable. Professor Brand, a brilliant NASA physicist, is working on plans to save mankind by transporting Earth's population to a new home via a wormhole. Brand must send former NASA pilot Cooper and a team of researchers through the wormhole and across the galaxy to find out which of three planets could be mankind's new home. This stars Matthew McConaughey, Jessica Chastain, Anne Hathaway, Mackenzie Foy, Timothy Chalamet, who we I forgot he was in this. Yeah, a Chabagoo. Timothy Chalamet my, fan myself, <laughs> Matt Damon, and Michael Caine. And I'm just going to add to that list because I was so happy to see him. Jonathan Lithgow. Yes, Jonathan Lithgow was in it when too. When he yeah. showed up, I was so happy to see him because I love Jonathan Lithgow. Yeah, so he's great. I will add his name to the list as well. Also Casey Affleck. Um, mm-hmm. We won't talk about him much. We Yeah, we won't be. We just, we'll leave it. Yeah, we'll leave him. I was kind of surprised to see him in Oppenheimer. I'm not yeah. going to lie. Anywho. Anywho. Okay, so... Mm -hmm. You have never seen Interstellar. I have not. I have seen Interstellar. Mm -hmm. I've only seen it once. I saw it in theaters when it came out in 2014. So I remembered nothing about this movie. (laughs) So it was basically like watching it for the first time. Obviously, there were things I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. But it was just like basically like watching it for the first time. Because you have such a fear. Mm hmm. And anxiety surrounding these things. I was very nervous about you seeing this movie. Yeah. 
I know you were. And I'm very curious. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? Mm -hmm. Are you okay? What did you think of Interstellar? (laughs) Tone check. (laughs) Do you need to drive me to a hospital? Do you need a Xanax? Like, where are we at? Like, scale of zero to Xanax, where are we at? So you want a tone check and uh, and my initial thoughts. thoughts. Okay. So my tone check is I only had a brief moment of panic once. Okay. Um, and it was as they were approaching the wormhole and like entering the wormhole. Mm-hmm. I think it got a little too spacey and a little uh-huh. too. I also have kind of like a fear of big things, and I think it is for the same reason. Like when when my brain starts to not handle something when uh-huh. it's like too big or too vast, I start to get a little panicky, and mm-hmm. so I think that's one of the reasons why I love disaster movies because a lot of big shit happens in disaster movies like Uh big waves big and there's a big wave in this movie and it gave me that same feeling Mm -hmm. of like oh my god but the the approach to the wormhole and going into the wormhole I was holding my breath Mm -hmm. and like our poor cat was on my lap and I think I was like digging my fingernails (laughs) into his back because I was petting him but I was like holding on to him because I was like oh my god oh my god he loved it yeah he thought he was getting like the best massage ever yeah (laughs) but I was panicking the rest of it however I I don't know if it's because I'm like medicated for anxiety now Uh and I wasn't when this movie came out sure I handled it just fine I think the rest of it didn't really hurt my brain too much I'm not gonna lie I figured it out and so I don't know if that helped. Okay. Like I, f- I knew he was the ghost question mark. Got you. From stay, like from way back. Really? Yeah. Oh, and see, I like completely did not. And I forgot. <laughs> and so did? when it okay. like was revealed at the end, I was like, oh my God. What? So I was like, I've seen this before and I already forgot. I, I don't know why. It just it made sense to me and i was just like okay like he's he's gonna figure out a way to communicate with her from a different dimension i just knew it huh and so watching it happen i think i in my mind had what i needed to figure out figured out Mm -hmm. and i was just watching it for like the experience of it Mm -hmm. and so i wasn't trying to like unpack it as much okay there was a brief second when he was in that alternate or not alternate, but like that fifth dimension. Mm -hmm. He was like falling and he was like heading toward different time periods. And Mm. like she's in the room, like on either side of him. Mm -hmm. My like heart rate went up a little bit because I started thinking like, what the fuck is even like, what is this? Yeah. But I would say like, for the most part, I was pretty shocked at how well you well I handled it. Okay. I think if you had seen this when this came out, you would have had a completely I would have not been okay. different reaction. <laughs> <laughs> I was a lot younger. I, again, was yeah. not medicated. It was good that I waited as I long as I did. I think it was good that you waited too. I will say, however, and this is going to go into my review, is I think the viewers of 2014 may have had some rose-colored glasses on. Okay. May I say something to that? Uh-huh. Yes, we did. <laughs> Because re-watching this, I'm not quite sure why I freaked the fuck out mm-hmm. the way that I did. But you think nine years ago? Yeah. This was probably like a pretty revolutionary film. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure like I completely understand watching this movie and just being like awed, like yeah. like awestruck by a lot of this. Yeah. However, I'm going to say that I thought its predecessor, Inception, was far more visually stimulating mm-hmm. than I think this was. And I think because I knew Inception came before this, and it's hard not to like compare all mm-hmm. of his films, mm-hmm. and I'm trying to just like take it for what it is. But I think for me, I've seen Inception before and I knew Inception came before Interstellar. Mm -hmm. And so I thought Interstellar was going to be a crazier visual Mm -hmm. experience than Inception was. Mm -hmm. And I don't really think it was. I mean, space Mm -hmm. is crazy and cool and like whatever. But I don't think there were elements of Christopher Nolan's version of space that was any more impressive than other versions of space that we've Mm -hmm. seen. Like I would say gravity is like the representation of space in gravity Mm -hmm. I thought was more visually interesting agreed I think the story was interesting there's obviously that layer of our reality which is 
climate change and how it's going to affect humanity moving forward Mm -hmm. and so there is that like internal panic of like what like is this ever gonna fucking happen sure sure and so i was connected to that element of the story and i would say that i almost was more interested when they were on earth going through that process and like before Mm -hmm. they got to nasa and then once him and murph got to nasa it's not that i lost interest but i felt like there was this like large portion of the movie that I just didn't really like connect with at all okay until we got to Matt Damon's section which Uh I thought the experience on that planet with Matt Damon was really good yeah so I know I'm getting like more in depth than I need to be (laughs) but I'm just going to say that I liked it Mm -hmm. I don't think I would put it in my top favorite Nolan movies Mm -hmm. and I know that for a lot of people it's like number one right and I interesting okay don't I mean the Dark Knight is better than this. Oppenheimer mm-hmm. is better than this. Mm-hmm. Inception is better than this. Mm-hmm. And I think my main issue overall was yes, I had like too high of expectations because of what I've seen from like Inception and Oppenheimer mm-hmm. and all these movies I've seen. Even Tenant, like sure. There are these dimensional twists and turns and things that we've seen from him before, and I feel like we've seen them in better ways. Uh-huh. But the main issue, oh my God, was that script. Yeah. I knew that I was having issues with the script pretty early on. I was Mm -hmm. just like, oh man, like this is some of, like he's not the best with dialogue, which we talked about in the Oppenheimer episode, but Mm -hmm. he's gotten a lot better as the years have gone on. And so I thought like maybe this was going to be approaching his better script Mm -hmm. writing and his better dialogue. I thought it was significantly worse than the Batman movies and Inception. There was a line where one of the astronauts is saying something to Matthew McConaughey's character Mm -hmm. and Matthew McConaughey looks at him and goes, say it, don't spray it, Ron. And I said, he wrote, say it, don't spray it into his film about interdimensional space travel. There was also another line where I don't know if it was Anne Hathaway or if it was Jessica Chastain. Both are great actresses in their own right. But Mm -hmm. one of them had to say, that lie, that monstrous lie. And Hathaway, and said Hathaway that. Way had to say that. Ooh, yeah, that was a bad one. I laughed at that. I laughed. And then Jessica Chastain, the poor thing, who is a beautiful and wonderful actress, mm-hmm. a beautiful person, she had to scream Eureka and throw papers in the air. Yeah, she did. Eureka! She had to say it twice and throw papers, <laughs> and throw twice. papers in the air. Yeah, the script. I don't know. So you're like, because we haven't okay. discussed this at all. We no. literally just finished the movie. So I know nothing about like what you're thinking right now. So tell me like what if I'm off. Okay, on well, this. here's the thing that's interesting for me, because I remember very distinctly seeing this movie in theaters and being blown away. Yeah. And I think part of it, because I was thinking about this while we were watching it at home, Part of it is that seeing a Christopher Nolan movie in a theater yeah, an is experience. an experience. Yeah. And you will leave the theater feeling something, mm-hmm. whether or not it was like an A plus movie. Yeah. Or a large popcorn movie to use our rating scale. Right. Absolutely. Also, it was nine years ago, almost 10 at this point. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about, okay, when I saw this the first time, I just remember that I loved it and I thought it was amazing. I was like blown away. Da, da, da. A rewatch nine years later, I don't feel quite as like overwhelmed by it. Yeah. The script. And again, I don't know if it's like it's not standing the test of time and like nine years ago that was an okay script Mm -hmm. or it was just like I said kind of like a revolutionary crazy film at the time because god almost a decade ago I mean that's a long time in film you know yeah and I think for me, I'm going to just quickly say that even though I'm saying that like visually it didn't impress me as much as other films, Mm -hmm. still 100% is impressive as a film. Sure, I'm not going to say that it's not impressive or that like I'm like some stuffy like Marvel movies are better like that. I'm not I'm not saying that. I just I I need to just put that out there that I do think this was a visually appealing movie for Mm -hmm. sure and one of my favorite things about this movie was the visuals and I do think that for me the main issues that I had re-watching this were the script and the directing even Mm -hmm. because we had some really good actors in this movie and they did not act well no 
Like Anne Hathaway, there was that one scene that I looked at you (laughs) in the middle of the movie. She has this really long monologue and the exact delivery she gave reminded me of the speech she makes as Mia Thermopolis in in The Princess Diaries. And I was like, surely she has grown as an actress since The Princess Diaries. But I feel like what you said with the directing is if uh, the director isn't pushing the actor to Mm -hmm. like dig deeper or find a new rhythm or try new things, Mm -hmm. a thousand percent, you can get a really great actress to do horrible things. Case in point is Natalie Portman in the Star Wars movies. Yeah. Natalie Portman is a fantastic actress. Mm -hmm. But when you're not directed well Mm -hmm. and you have really bad lines, it's really hard to give a good performance. Yeah. And that's such a bad combination. Yeah. Unfortunately. And I think for me, that was the biggest thing that stood out was just the acting was not there at all, really, with anyone. Matt Damon. I'm going to say it. Matt Damon was great. Matt Damon was great. And the little girl Murph was, Murph was good. I also thought Jonathan Lithgow was really yeah, good. Yeah, but like he's always he's good. Always good. Yeah. Timothy Chalamet was just Timothy Chalamet. Like yeah. he was just there. I mean, he, he, was he didn't do there. a bad job, but like he no. had a very small appearance. Yeah. But Matthew McConaughey and Jessica Chastain and Anne Hathaway, like some of my favorite actors, honestly. Yeah. I was just so like underwhelmed by their mm-hmm. performances. And I could tell, like, I know because I've seen all three of them act tremendously right it's not them like this was a case of it was definitely christopher nolan not them (laughs) yeah i think that is one of the things that makes me honestly like appreciate oppenheimer even more yeah seeing his growth from this movie in terms of direction Mm -hmm. and dialogue and character and i know after oppenheimer came out a lot of people that we follow on instagram were Mm -hmm. doing lists of their favorite Christopher Nolan movies and a lot of people put Interstellar as number one and so I was kind of like wow is this really like is this better like is it a better character story is it better visually and I can say with a hundred percent confidence that Oppenheimer is leaps and bounds now that I've seen Interstellar and I've seen all of his work Mm -hmm. leaps and bounds Christopher Nolan's best work yeah by far in a way and i agree and if you don't think that it is i feel like it's just like a preference thing it's not like you're objectively saying this movie is better i feel like it's just like i like batman better than i like Uh historical you know whatever or i like space more than i sci-fi more than i like historical dramas right so i feel like it's more of like a genre preference than it is actually analyzing it like like, objectively as what the film is itself yeah also i didn't realize people loved interstellar this much yeah i didn't either so my question to those people who do put interstellar first like when's the last time you watched it yeah no that's what i was you know what i mean that's what i was wondering and why i said the rose-colored glasses thing is i'm wondering if people had that same feeling that you had coming out of the theater Mm -hmm. Like, holy shit, what did I just watch? Kind of like when I watched Avatar for the first time. Yeah. I, when I saw Avatar for the first time, man, I was blown away. Mm -hmm. I thought it was one of the best things I've ever watched in my life. Mm -hmm. And then I watched it again later. And because that like heightened adrenaline and like stimulus and you're just like overwhelmed in the sound and the visuals, when you actually watch it again and you take that away and you look at like the writing and the characters because mm-hmm. I feel like that's what happens on your second watch is yeah. you, you start to recognize like the the deeper layers of what mm-hmm. makes a film and not just like your experience with it yeah and that's what happened to me and I have to say like I was excited to watch Interstellar yeah. I quickly started feeling disappointed yeah. because I was like oh ah, this is not how I remembered yeah. it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like yeah, I, yeah. I, the second watch was extremely underwhelming and kind of disappointing. And again, it's it's a good film. Like you said, the visuals are impressive. There are a lot of good things about it. Interesting. You know, the, the storytelling is pretty good. Yeah. Even those scripts. It's sucks. a good story for sure. It's a it's great a good story. story. But something about it, I don't know. I just feel like this is one that just doesn't didn't hold up. Yeah. You know. I think another issue that I had with the script, even though the story was really interesting, and like I said, I was really hooked on the concept of like, could this ever happen? Mm -hmm. What would humanity do in this situation? There were a couple of issues in how we got to places Mm -hmm. 
And I'm just going to go all the way to the end and just say him getting out of this fifth dimension place Mm -hmm. and then floating through space and then being discovered by a ship with only seconds left of his oxygen. Mm -hmm. I feel like there were a lot of moments in in this movie where it was like everything was a little too easy for Matthew McConaughey to survive or Mm -hmm. to and it was almost like he made the stakes too high. And so whenever he was able to succeed seed it felt less like a triumph and more like well how the fuck did that happen yeah you know like Uh it was too many things back to back to back to back that were just wild crazy impossible Mm -hmm. and somehow he did it and i think if it was a little more balanced where we had like little moments of that throughout but Mm -hmm. it was really like the whole movie was just like now there's a giant wave they have to connect to a spinning ship that's broken in (laughs) half now his oxygen is running out and he's breathing in ammonia now Mm -hmm. he's in a fifth dimension now and it was just too much i would have personally been more interested if it was less those perilous moments back to back to back to back Mm -hmm. and more the unpacking of which I thought the highlights of the movie were Matthew McConaughey unpacking the concept that he is quite literally losing time. Okay, that's what I was about to say because those moments were like glossed over. Yeah, they went really quick. They went real quick and they were kind of few and far between yeah. to be honest and i don't think we like stayed there long enough mm-hmm. like it was just like a list of bad things that could happen to matthew mcconaughey's character yeah it doesn't feel like a triumph because after like the third or fourth one You're it's like, like well, i know he's gonna, okay he's gonna live there's like, 45 yeah, minutes left in the movie of we, course he's gonna live yeah we've already established <laughs> he's gonna live and this is all gonna wrap up in a little bow yeah it's such a missed opportunity here. it is a missed opportunity Because there was also Anne Hathaway struggling with her realization of like not, you know, losing the love of her life and not connecting with that. They glossed over that one real quick. Completely. Also, the concept of them never going back to Earth. Yeah. Like there were just so many things that I felt like were more human. Yeah. That were more real, that were more genuine, that I feel like we should have stayed with. Stayed with those a little bit longer Mm -hmm. instead of... Of, I think because he loves a long ass movie. Yeah. <laughs> he tried to keep it like fast paced with these perilous events. Mm-hmm. But I almost think it backfired on him. Yeah. Like, I don't think it helped the pacing at all. No. And I don't think it helped with the story building at all. I agree. Like, what you were saying about Anne Hathaway's character, like, the end of the movie is her getting to the planet that her, the love of her life mm-hmm. was on and that she lost. She could have joined him if mm-hmm. they had just gone there mm-hmm. instead of going to the one that Matt Damon was on. Mm-hmm. And because they shot around to like build up speed for Mm -hmm. her ship to get there she lost like a hundred something years i forget what they said i think he said 51 oh 51 years we got like a fragment of a scene where she sets his little badge on a rock yeah and also i felt like they could have developed more of their friendship like anne hathaway and matthew mcconaughey's friendship because matthew mcconaughey at the end truly does not know that he's going to end up in this fifth dimension sure and so he thinks he's just kind of like going off into space he's probably gonna die but i felt like their friendship wasn't there i think he thought he developed it yeah through those perilous events like i think he thought because like trauma bonding yeah like they went through these things together it's like you don't really need an explanation of why he would be doing that for her but like we kind of do yeah because like yes we know like they went through all these crazy things but there wasn't a ton of meaningful dialogue between them really ever really truly i think it was just an underdeveloped script and i think it was just a good concept a great idea a great story yeah and i think it is so cool that we got to watch this one Mm -hmm. right on the heels of Oppenheimer yeah because it is amazing to see (laughs) the growth what he was able to accomplish in Oppenheimer y'all if you have seen Oppenheimer like just go watch Interstellar Mm -hmm. and just like see what you see yeah okay I'm just gonna say (laughs) See see. see what you see there were a lot of misses there were a lot of misses and I will say that there were some positives too which I think the main positive is I would put Jessica Chastain slash the daughter as one of Christopher Nolan's better female characters Mm -hmm. I think she was a little bit more fleshed out Mm -hmm. in terms of 
motivation and also just being like her own person yeah. and not just like a tool for the script agreed which Anne Hathaway was a thousand percent just a yeah. tool to get from like place sure. to place and so I will say that I would put her with like Emily Blunt as mm-hmm. like one of the better written female characters that yeah that he has directed and written mm-hmm. so I will say that that was a positive there were glimmers of really good acting from Matthew McConaughey yeah. and it was mostly in those scenes where he's questioning is this the right thing to do did I just abandon my family mm-hmm. so when he actually was able to explore those deeper things that we really wanted him to touch on mm-hmm. I felt like Matthew McConaughey like opened up a little bit. I felt like like, that too. And he got there. But the rest of the movie, it was just like, I'm the smart guy that figures everything out, that can Mm -hmm. fly any spacecraft, that can fly any plane, that can figure any situation out. It's like he had a solution for everything. Yeah, he's like the MacGyver of space. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't love when a hero is that perfect. Mm -hmm. And I felt like he was too perfect. Yeah. And every choice he made was the right one. Sure. And I just and got it all a, worked out. And I just how got a little to, yeah. tired of it because I was mm-hmm. like, man, every time something happens, he's like, you know what? It's fine. We have no fuel. We have no <laughs> supplies. But you know what? I'm going to rocket us around this wormhole and shoot us at this planet. This man has just been farming in the Dust Bowl. <laughs> like, ha- how has he just like appeared at NASA and he's flying and maneuvering right. all these insane things through wormholes and black holes and yeah like, it was a little much it was just so a little too unbelievable yeah for me to connect with you yeah. know and i felt like every time christopher nolan would like come to a problem mm-hmm. he would kind of just be like okay never mind about that let's nope. watch matthew mcconaughey be perfect in space yeah the the problem's actually not there and i was like no. and i was just like and <laughs> back to matthew mcconaughey in space and scene yeah <laughs> i will say about matthew mcconaughey though is i have never been a matthew mcconaughey person a stan a matthew mcconaughey stan before i liked little farmer matthew mcconaughey i thought he was very handsome yeah he was looking good i've always thought he's handsome but he i felt like looked particularly good in this movie but he looked the best as like farmer mcconaughey yeah i don't know what it was space Space mcconaughey didn't do anything for me it's because he was like a little dirty maybe he was a little yeah with his little like beer on the front yeah. porch and his little jacket. He's just a little dust bowl guy. He's just a little dust McConaughey. Dusty McConaughey can can get it. He yeah. Did, he looked really sure good. Sure can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was very pleased to see Dusty McConaughey and Jessica Chastain. It made my heart yeah. sore. Some beautiful people. Some beautiful people. All right. Are you ready for popcorn scores? Let's do it. Yeah. Me first or you first? You first. Okay. Um, I'm going to give this a medium. Okay. There was a little tiny bit of me that was let down enough Mm -hmm. that I was like, maybe I want this to be a small, Mm -hmm. but that's bullshit. It's, it's just because I'm comparing it to other things. Sure. I'm comparing it to Inception. I'm comparing it to Oppenheimer. Those are the two that I'm kind of like sticking, sticking them between. And I think even though those movies in my mind are light years ahead. If this was John Johnson's first movie sure. and I didn't know who made it, I probably would say it's a medium and it's good and mm-hmm. it was a great, you know, space movie and fun to watch and right. missed opportunities, sure. But I would absolutely not give it a small. So that's bullshit on my sure. end. So I'm going to say medium. When I saw this in 2014, it was a large. Yeah. When I watched this in my home in 2023... <laughs> It's a medium. Okay. I, it's definitely you're still... Not, you're not into no, the small I'm zone. not being okay. dramatic, you know, and just going crazy and calling it a small. I think it was a feat mm-hmm. in its time. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I want it to be a large and I Feels wanted... Feels incomplete. Yeah. Like, I wanted... Mm-hmm. I wanted to rewatch it and be like, yeah, I loved that. I, like, that's why I loved Interstellar. And like, that's mm-hmm. why I flipped my shit when I saw it in theaters. And it's just like... Mm, I'm like a little bit judging myself, but it's like, it's okay (laughs) because we didn't know. It was just 2014. I I think if I saw it in 2014, absolutely, I would have had a panic attack and I would not have been okay. But I think (laughs) if I wasn't scared of space and time and I saw it in 2014, 
again, I'd probably be blown away. It's the same sure. thing as when you see, I mean, I enjoy, you know, The Last Jedi, which most people think is a horrific movie. But mm -hmm. when I was in the theater watching it, yeah, it's the experience of it. And sure. I think Christopher Nolan is such a master at creating experience and creating just a world to drop into that yeah. you get lost and you mm -hmm. don't really pay attention to like the little things yeah. quite as much. And, you know, who knows, maybe I'll watch Oppenheimer back and I'll pick up on things that I don't sure. like in person. But I will say that, like, I've rewatched a lot of his stuff, mm -hmm. a lot of his stuff. And I've never felt the way that you feel right now yeah. about rewatching things that I've True. seen from him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can we really quickly before we wrap this up say the best line in the whole movie yeah i know you know what i'm talking about yes. because we both immediately started quoting it like after he said and it. it's been like replaying in my head a million <laughs> times since he said it yes okay when he sees nasa is building this circular rotational whatever mm -hmm. matthew mcconaughey in the best delivery goes this entire facility is centrifuge <laughs> This entire facility is a centrifuge. Yeah, it was like, dang. And you know what else this movie made me really want to do? I want to, doesn't he have like a podcast where he listens, like he reads bedtime stories or something? Does he? Or I think maybe on Calm, like the app, I think there's like, he reads Get bedtime out stories. Of here. And that's all this movie made me want to do because I was like, man, he <laughs> talks real cool. Yeah, he does. Like he talks real cool. Also, I like how he talks. I love how no one in the movie had a Southern accent. Mm -hmm. his kids didn't his nope. father-in-law didn't mm -mm. no one at nasa did and nope. this man was just rocking his el paso dude whatever he's just a fucking lone ranger <laughs> just let him be him i really need to look up what that app, i think i'm pretty sure it is on the calm app that he like reads bedtime stories i can't but, like that'll put my ass to sleep for real good night caitlin this entire facility is centrifuge. centrifuge. <laughs> he said something else about gravity. He was like, the pull of gravity. And I was just like, oh my God. What a guy. What a guy. Oh my God, a foot cramp. <gasps> oh no. Oh. That does it for us. Thank you for listening to our first throwback episode. I am very excited to see what you pick. I'm excited to see what I pick too. Because I don't have a fucking clue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, next week, because I have picked mine, mm -hmm. will be my pick. I'm not going to say it because until we watch it, Caitlin is going to have no idea what movie I'm picking. So once we watch it, it, I will post that on Instagram so you guys can see the next throwback movie we are reviewing. Until then, have a great week, everyone. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us on the ride home.